Thank you so much uh, before going to for the presentation. I'm uh, extremely uh, thankful to the um, organizations of this uh, wonderful symposium. I think, as I discussed with the Director General before, uh, these kind of events like in Europe, in, in, in different areas, like outside of our war uh, uh, countries, like in Afghanistan, Syria, and Iraq, I think a little bit that, that it can heal our wounds that what we are facing in our countries uh, in, in shape of war. So thank you so much uh, for giving this opportunity and uh, we would like to share with you about the cultural heritage in our countries. And uh, uh, you know, uh, we cannot tell too much about the cultural heritage of Afghanistan in 20 minutes, but I would like to go very briefly um, uh, overall the situation in cultural heritage in Afghanistan and what we are doing uh, for the protections of the cultural heritage and uh, what are the threats and issues that we are facing there. So about the introduction of the cultural heritage, I don't want to go and uh, uh, to talk about it. Uh, these are a few topics that I'm, I would like to, uh, to talk uh, during my presentations. Uh, here uh, you can see uh, the map of Afghanistan, uh, which is a hub of cultural heritage uh, in Central Asia or South, South Asia. Afghanistan in ancient times, it connected currently as well, uh, but unfortunately, during, uh, in, in, uh, in the result of this war, we have lost our uh, historical context uh, due to the uh, war. But in ancient time, uh, we were, uh, Afghanistan were uh, connecting different um, areas, regions, like you can see China was also connected with Central Asia and uh, Iran and Mesopotamia through Afghanistan and uh, India, like Indus Valley civilization and Mesopotamian civilizations, they were connected through Afghanistan. So that's why we can say Afghanistan was a hub of ancient civilizations. And uh, as we saw in our, uh, some of our archaeological sites, uh, which is dated to the Bronze Age, like uh, 2000 or 3000 BC, uh, uh, we have found it, uh, the, uh, the uh, lapis lazuli uh, from Mesopotamia, where it was used. And it was from Afghanistan. They used there for different purposes. And we have found it some uh, Mesopotamian objects in Afghanistan uh, in, in different archaeological sites like Tepe Folol in, in Baglan province. So these kind of things that we have the evidence of these things that Afghanistan, how Afghanistan was uh, linked with different uh, uh, regions. Uh, this 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 picture is one of the uh, we can say is the, um, the 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 worst picture that we have the, uh, all the Afghans have in their life once they see this these four four things that you can see here the first one in, uh, you can see it's the Soviet invasion uh, in 1979 and they were there for almost uh, 10 years. Uh, and from there, uh, the, the bad luck or the um, uh, bad luck for Afghanistan, not only for the cultural heritage, but in every aspect, like the um, uh, the infrastructures in every part, they were started uh, in Afghanistan, and millions of people were uh, refugees outside of Afghanistan in different countries. Many of them came here to Europe and to the neighboring countries like Pakistan and, and other countries. So that was the, one of the bad days that we had. And after that, we, we also had a dark period during the um, uh, 1989 uh, till 1995, which was also one of the worst um, uh, period that we had. And during this period, there was mujahideens, like a, a group of people who are uh, fighting between dif a different uh, a group of people who are fighting between each other. And different part of the country, even different part of one city was controlling by these different uh, groups. And they were fighting with each other. And we, we, we lost a lot of our uh, cultural heritage during this period. So in next slides, I will explain uh, this. Again, the Taliban region from 1995 till 2001, this was not a good uh, period for Afghanistan as well because they, particularly in, in, in uh, cultural heritage, they have demolished the majority of the archaeological sites, the um, historic buildings. So later I will show you some, some, some example in this. And also intangible cultural heritage, they was totally uh, disappeared uh, in Afghanistan. Lastly, 
with this new uh, invasion of uh, the uh, U.S. in 2001, which, was, which is still going on, you know, uh, still there is battle and uh, you can't work uh, uh, freely in Afghanistan. Uh, there are some, some uh, for a few aspects of this cultural heritage which has been uh, uh, influenced by these four, uh, last four um, uh, occasions, uh, wars, like the objects. Uh, uh, we, have lot, uh, we have lost many objects from our archaeological site. They were, they were looted, and even majority of them were uh, broken or destroyed during this period. Majority of the monuments, like you can see uh, one of the um, famous, world famous, and the tallest Buddha uh, statues in Bamiyan, that it was destroyed during this, uh, in 2001, which is an uh, ir irreplaceable loss for Afghanistan, not only for Afghanistan, but for all the world. And uh, like uh, our intangible culture heritage, you know, uh, the, uh, especially during this, uh, the Taliban regions, they have banned the, uh, like the music programs. They have burned all the music archives, music inst institutions, and everything in Afghanistan, so, which was also very uh, sad for us. And the National Museum collections during this period, as I said before, it was as the, uh, Kabul city was controlled by different uh, uh, militant groups, and, they, and the museum part was one uh, in one of the control under the control of one of the militant group, and they they converted this as a as a battle place or a center for their battle, and they have destroyed the museum building. In next slides, you will see, and we have lost all the records of the museum uh, collections there. And uh, uh, you can see here some of the destruction. These Buddha statues, you can see here. Uh, in 2001, uh, uh, the, the Taliban uh, president, they issue a decree that we should, uh, uh, we should uh, have demolished all these um, idols, uh, like the statues, throughout Afghanistan. And based on that decree, they, have, they started from, uh, from the National Museum. And they almost broken around 2,500 uh, statues, uh, Buddhist statues in, in the national museums. And majority of them were they, they looted. And then from here, you can see some of the uh, effigies from, from Nuristan. Uh, uh, they also broken these things. And then they went to Bamiyan, and they have uh, destroyed our, uh, the uh, Buddha statues there. You can see here some of the uh, pictures that how they broke on these uh, things. And in the National Museum, you can see here, uh, I will show in the next slides the current situation at the National Museum. But during this period, until 2001, from 79 till 2001, the museum was totally um, destroyed. And uh, during this period, from in 1982, a committee was formed, and they have transferred some of the collections from National Museums to secure places like the Presidential Palace and uh, the, some other places. And we have saved around... 22,000 uh, objects uh, from the National Museum. But we, uh, at, at those days, before 2001, we had around uh, 1 lakh and 40,000 objects at the National Museums. Uh, but we saved very little part. Around 70% of museum collections uh, were looted uh, and, and destroyed. So you can see here, this is the uh, music record, and they were burnt by the Taliban uh, in uh, archives and uh, music institutions. The site was looted, and still the sites are uh, looting by the illegal diggers. As you know, still the situation, the security situation in the country is not good, and the people are uh, illegally excavating the sites, and they are transferring uh, to um, black markets. Uh, here is one of the pictures that recently, I think a few months ago, uh, that was um, uh, some of the uh, looted uh, Buddhist sculptures was um, uh, captured or conf uh, confiscated in, in uh, Pakistan. And probably, you know, the, these were uh, looted from the archaeological site as there was no record of this, from, not from the museum. So, and probably we may think that it was probably from Afghanistan as it were very similar to the um, sculptures from Afghanistan. Uh, here you can see that when they're looting the sites or the museums in, the, in this period, how they are transferring, what, what, are, what are the routes that they are going. So you can see here clearly 
that the prim primary exit for Afghan antiquities appear to be Pakistan's because it's very easy for the, for the illegal traders that they can bring the objects from, from Afghanistan very easily to Pakistan. And from there, they're going to different areas, particularly to, to United Arab Emirates. And then from there, it can come to Switzerland, from Europe, to US, and, and different uh, countries. And another uh, things are, are threats that, uh, that is, uh, we are facing uh, is the, um, our, which can cause the looting of archaeological objects is the, these, um, the, the antiquity sellers that we have in Afghanistan. And majority of these illegal traders, they have in contact with these antiquity sellers. And uh, they're providing the money and the persons who are uh, selling these antiquities, uh, they are uh, involved with them and they are selling uh, through these antiquity dealers. The problem is that we don't have enough documentations as we, we, we lost a lot of our documentation during this war from the Archaeology Institute and also from the National Museum. So we don't have enough documentation of these archaeological objects. So that's very easy for them that they can uh, transport from Afghanistan. Uh, uh, recently in 2004, uh, we have um, uh, uh, have uh, prepared a law, which is a uh, law of preservation of culture, heritage, uh, culture and historical properties in Afghanistan. And in this law, uh, before we had a law, but there was, we, we bring some amendments in this law. And now, uh, like as I mentioned uh, here, uh, there is a specific definition of the uh, cultural properties in Afghanistan, which should have at least 100 years and should be uh, very uh, important uh, um, uh, uh, historically, um, culturally, and uh, scientifically, it should be important. But if the, the age is less than 100 years, but it should have some uh, scientific, um, artistic, and uh, historical uh, values. So based on this law, no one has the right uh, to, to transfer any uh, objects from one place to another place without involving or informing the uh, government, like the Archaeology Institute uh, in Afghanistan. So, um, and uh, based on this law, the Archaeology Institute is responsible to identify, to survey all the archaeological sites in Afghanistan. And based on that, we have surveyed around 4,000 archaeological sites uh, located in Afghanistan uh, in different areas, and that is from Stone Age up till now. And we have prepared a national heritage list, and we have published this uh, now. And uh, in this slide, it has been mentioned that uh, no one has the ownership of the cultural property uh, as defined in this law and is uh, um, uh, published in the National Heritage List. Everything is belong to the government, if either it belongs uh, to a public property. So that, that, that helped us because before, before the law, we, we can't prevent someone that who can dig uh, in their own land. They can dig and they can do everything. But now with this law, we prevented these kind of activities. So here is, like, as, as I mentioned about the Archaeology Institute, uh, we are um, uh, working on the discovery, preservations, educations, and our outreach program about the archaeological heritage in uh, order to bring um, uh, peace and harmony in the country. And this institute is established around uh, 50 years. Uh, we are doing excavations, and uh, we did excavation in more than 100 archaeological sites, and we have excavated more than uh, 1 lakh and 20,000 archaeological objects and, and transferred to the National Museums. And still our work is for the restoration of archaeological sites and uh, buildings. We have a specific uh, method of uh, documentation of uh, archaeological sites or registering the uh, sites in Afghanistan, uh, which I show here. Uh, you know, uh, during this war, a uh, majority of the site has been looted by the, by the illegal diggers, and this is a big problem for us, that how we can control them, because we can't go in these, in these uh, uh, days, as the security is not good, we can't go to different parts of the country, uh, that how we can monitor and how we can control this illegal excavation. 
Uh, for this, uh, we have recently signed an MOU with the Oriental Institute of Chicago University, and we are working uh, uh, for a geospatial database uh, that we are using uh, different kind of methods like um, corona images and different images to identify and to put all those records that we have to, in, in this database. And from that, we are controlling that how much sites has been looted uh, and destroyed. Here is a few examples of these sites that how we, can, we are monitoring uh, these uh, sites. Uh, we also established and published a red list. As I mentioned, we have lost around 70% of museum collections and majority of the sites, uh, uh, archaeological sites, have been looted. Um, and still we are receiving reports from different parts of the country that, uh, and which is not under the control of the government. Uh, the people are doing the illegal excavation. So based on that, you know, uh, one of the, uh, the best means uh, and uh, the things which can support this kind of illegal excavation is that uh, we have free um, uh, um, places to sell these kind of archaeological objects, like in Europe, we have markets that everyone can buy these kind of things, like U.S. and this thing, this area. So for that, and uh, we have established this uh, red list, and we uh, informed our colleagues that they can help us. And uh, based on this uh, red list, uh, uh, we have uh, from UK uh, in 2012, I think, uh, we have uh, they have returned around. 3,000, uh, around 3,000 objects to the National Museum which was captured or confiscated in Hetri Airport, you can see here. And they have um, cataloged these objects, you can see there, a catalog by them. So, uh, and they returned to the National Museum. Similarly, we, we had many objects returned from, and around 12,000 objects were returned from various countries, including Norway, uh, U.S. And, uh, and, and uh, U.K. and Germany and different countries. Recently, we also started the restoration of uh, historic monuments, uh, which was destroyed during the war, uh, uh, with the help of different uh, national and international organizations like Aga Khan Trust for Culture and some Afghan organizations. Uh, here is one of the example. You can see here the Babur Garden, uh, which is uh, around 1500 uh, AD uh, uh, to the Mughal periods in Afghanistan. And this garden has been totally restored and now well established. And the people, and this is one of the uh, uh, main places for, uh, for the public in Kabul that they can visit and they can enjoy. Uh, we also have another big project uh, in Afghanistan, uh, that's the excavation in Misanak archaeological site. Uh, this archaeological site is located around 35 kilometers southwest of Kabul, the main city of uh, the, the capital of Afghanistan, and which is uh, located, this archaeological site is located just above the world's second largest copper mines uh, and uh, we can say this is a fortunate for us that we have the world's second largest mines and the, one of the big archaeological remains, both in the same uh, place. But this is also a big challenge for us that how we can benefit from both these uh, um, uh, resources like the cultural heritage and also the copper mines. Uh, so we are working since 2009. The um, excavations is going on there. Uh, and we have been unearthed various kind of um, uh, remains there, like the Buddhist um, uh, monastery, stupas. Uh, and actually, this is a complete city that where we have founded different religions, like Zoroastrian religions, uh, the uh, Buddhist religion, and even the Islam, uh, Islamic religion uh, evidence we also found it in ancient time there. Uh, like here, we are also working uh, for the training. As I said uh, before, that during the war, majority of our people have been migrated, and they went to the western countries and also to the neighboring countries. And once they are coming back right now, they have they they, they have 
uh, lost their identity almost, uh, their intangible culture heritage. They have been very influenced by, by those where they lived. So once they are coming back, they are just uh, influenced by their culture. So now we are trying and we are working with different organizations like our uh, Afghanistan National Institute of Music and uh, Turquoise Mountain and other Aga Contras for Culture and different organizations. And we are training them that how they can, how our uh, this uh, traditional way of uh, like uh, craftsmanship, music and those things, how we can survive. So we are training them. We are also training, as uh, I said, that majority of our staff, the, the experienced staff, was either they uh, died during the war or either they left the countries and they went outside of Afghanistan. And now our staff is very young and uh, they, they have very limited experience in this field to how to protect uh, the cultural heritage. So we are working with different uh, international organizations to, to train them and they can work properly. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, during the war, uh, particularly from 1982 till 1995, uh, the museum, uh, the National Museum of Afghanistan was totally destroyed, and we have lost almost 70% of the museum collections. But since 2001, we are working for the rehabilitation of the National Museum, and uh, we we working on the physical rehabilitation of the museum and also for the collections uh, or the documentation of the National Museum. Here are some pictures that you can see and different organizations are working with us. Uh, you can see these are the storerooms of the museums during this period, as I mentioned, which, which, which was a mess. The record was totally broken. Uh, here is the, the effigies from Nuristan. Uh, you know, Nuristan is a province uh, which not accepted Islam until 1993, I think. And they, they were called as a non-Muslim or kafir in that area. And they had a very good specific culture uh, in Nuristan. And they were making these kind of effigies for their uh, religious purposes. Uh, as you know, wood are very uh, easily uh, available in Nuristan. And we had a very good collection at the National Museum, but unfortunately we lost a big number of those collections during the war. Uh, this, is, this is a picture of the museum in Ghazni. Uh, we recently, uh, in 2013, we have opened this, uh, this museum. Uh, as Ghazni was um, nominated as the um, Islamic cultural capital of, uh, through, by, by ISISCO. And we have opened this museum in Ghazni. Uh, but unfortunately, just one year later, uh, two years later, in 2015, uh, 14, uh, this museum was uh, under attack and we have lost majority of our objects in the museum. Uh, this is the, um, like as I mentioned, about the uh, rehabilitation and sense of documentation as during the war we have lost our uh, documentation for the National Museum, but now we have restarted the, um, uh, the database for the National Museums, either also for the archaeological object and also for the ethnographic uh, collection. And until now, it's around 45,000 objects have been registered, uh, which we can say it's around 40% uh, of the whole collection that what we had before the war. So this is a kind of um, uh, record sheet. Uh, there are many problems, uh, causes of damages, like as I mentioned, to, to the cultural heritage in Afghanistan. Few of them I have mentioned. In the picture, you can see the security as the first one is for us is the security in Afghanistan. Still, we don't know that what can be happen and where and when. Uh, so you will be on the way to, to an archaeological site and suddenly there will be a blast and you will lost your life. As you can see in the picture I just put here, this is my colleague. Uh, he's a he was a very good, competent archaeologist, uh, conservator. Uh, just a few months ago, uh, when he was on the way to this Messianic archaeological site, he was under attack and we lost him and now he's dead. So unfortunately, this, this is one of the big um, uh, uh, threats for us that we can't work uh, in, in all areas. Again, 
the economy of the people are not good, you know, as due to the war and different reasons. And based on that, they are trying to, uh, and you know, the selling the archaeological object is one of the best and easiest way for the people that they can get the money to sell in the markets. So this is one of the reasons that they are going to uh, excavate the sites and they are selling these um, uh, objects in the black markets. And the lack of expertise is also one of the big issues for us. Uh, as I mentioned, we now all of our people and staff are very young. So and we have very limited experience staff there. So this is also a big issue for us. And we have no management system. Uh, our, uh, no management system, or we can say a very weak management system of archaeological sites in Afghanistan. And this is because of the security, lack of professionals, lack of funds, that, uh, which can cause um, uh, to the archaeological heritage. We also, we don't have, like, as... Our organizations are very new, and particularly most of the people are interested in some development projects, and the cultural heritage in Afghanistan is not in the priority of, of the government. So that's, that's why we have very lack of coordinations, like when the Agriculture and Urban Development Ministry, they are implementing a kind of project, development projects. Uh, like for the mining extractions or any other um, uh, projects, roads, different things in, in different parts of the country, they are not communicating with the relevant or the Ministry of Culture, So, which caused m m many times, which caused the destruction of archaeological heritage. As I have recently, like months ago, we had an example of there was road, road constructed from Kabul to different, uh, like, Logar province, and they, they were on the way of that road. There was different uh, archaeological sites were coming, and the government was decided to, to go and to construct a road. But fortunately, we were lucky that we, we protect them, and we say that you can't do the road here. So these kind of things, and natural erosion also in Afghanistan is one of the main issues. You know, majority of our archaeological remains are in clay, so mostly once it, it's clear and, you, and, and the weather condition in Afghanistan is not so good, uh, it's different sometimes. So mostly these uh, clay objects are uh, destroying with, the, with this natural, naturally. Climate change, war, internal conflict, and especially, you know, uh, uh, m m most of the people are in Afghanistan as they have lack of um, awareness about the cultural heritage. They are thinking that their uh, cultural uh, history started from, from the um, arrival of Islam, like 1,400 years. But our main relig uh, uh, history goes beyond that. Like we have 1,000 years Buddhism was there, and we are everywhere in Afghanistan. We have Buddhist uh, side. But mostly the people are not uh, familiar, are not in favor to, to protect this, uh, this kind of uh, cultural heritage, which is before Islam. So this is one of the serious threats for us in Afghanistan, uh, that they have lack of awareness. What we are doing uh, for those uh, issues and problems that I have mentioned that once as there will be uh, like the big mega projects, development projects in Afghanistan, like minings and, and different things. Uh, first, as I mentioned, we have lack of documentation in, uh, for the archaeological heritage. So now we are working to document it, to identify the archaeological site, that where these are located. So once we have identified, you can see here that we are working on this map, uh, where this, uh, especially, uh, particularly uh, about these mining um, uh, areas, we have around 20, until now we have identified around 20 mining areas located in different parts of Afghanistan. So once we identified these areas uh, with all this documentation, we will share those information with the relevant with relevant ministries like Ministry of Urban Development, Ministry of Mines and Petroleum, and different ministry that they can, uh, uh, that we can work together, that how we can protect this uh, archaeological heritage. So this is our project that's uh, now we recently started uh, for the uh, protection of the archaeological remains. You can see here uh, with this database that currently we are building. Uh, you can see the uh, the shape of the archaeological sites. You can see in the left bottom left, 
this is uh, the Lashkari Bazar uh, site located in Helmand province. And uh, you can see a recent, the recent photograph. It's almost um, um, demolished or not uh, there now. So this is all these uh, developments that are happening in Afghanistan. Uh, here is another example of Balkh city. You can see the development is there, and majority of the archaeological remains has been uh, demolished in the passage of time. Uh, we have recently started to establish, uh, as for the good documentations, uh, a database for all those archaeological excavations that we are doing, uh, a proper recording system. So you can see here that we are currently developing this to have proper documentation of all the archaeological um, objects that we are excavating. It can help us in the future. You know, for the National Museum, we also established um, a database uh, of all records. And so once we have uh, a database, our proper record of archaeological uh, objects, finds from, from the sites and also from the museum, I think it can help us in the future illegal export of this kind of property that uh, uh, we can control it. Uh, we are also doing uh, uh, public awareness programs in the future uh, uh, for, for public awareness uh, purposes and doing exhibitions, heritage education, conferences, and different things. And this is one of the important projects that recently we have started to educate school children because, you know, um, as in Afghanistan, it's, it's difficult to convince the elders. The elders' education uh, level is not too much high, so we we, we targeted the, the school children that we can convince them and we can educate them. Then they can easily uh, convince uh, their parents to protect the culture heritage, and they can tell this uh, tell them about the importance of culture heritage. Another important thing that uh, we have now doing for the to stop the illegal uh, export of cultural properties by signing different bilateral agreements. Like recently, we have started to sign an agreement with the bilateral agreement with the U.S. that they can stop uh, uh, buying the uh, objects, uh, artifacts from Afghanistan. So similar things we would like to do for other European countries, and I would be very happy f that uh, that from this symposium that we can have links with different uh, European countries that we can sign these uh, bilateral agreements and they can help us to stop buying the object from Afghanistan, which is very important. Finally, this is a, a, a stone that is kept in front of the National Museum, which says that a nation stays alive when its culture stays alive. So without culture and history, we, we will not be uh, alive. So thank you so much for your time and hope you enjoyed it.